Aircraft carriers are a national treasure and source of pride for the United States. These giants, sailing the world from ocean to ocean, instill a sense of fear and uneasiness in all potential adversaries. But in today's video, we will not focus so much on the monstrous combat vehicles themselves, but on the people who serve on board their decks, thus providing you and me with a peaceful sky overhead. The United States has rightfully established itself as the leading country in the design of aircraft carriers. At the current moment, the newest aircraft carrier of the Gerald R. Ford class, the CVN-78 with the same name, plows mightily through the seas, while its colleague of sorts, the John F. Kennedy CVN-79 is at its finishing stage. The Enterprise CVN-80 and Doris Miller CVN-81 are still at their development stage, and the fifth ship, which is scheduled to enter service in 2036, has not even received a name yet, only the CVN-82 code. All in all, the US Air Force plans to build at least 10 aircraft carriers of this class, spending more than $38 billion on the first three ships alone. But in order to maintain such a colossal maritime structure, generous portions from the defense budget are not enough. One must also have in the ready tens of thousands of people and hundreds of thousands of man-hours keeping all systems in readiness. If one is to understand the structure of the life experienced by the aircraft carrier's crew, then first of all, one needs to realize that, as in the case of cruise liners, this is literally a city on the water. The newest supercarrier's capacity ranges from 5,000 to 6,000 people. At the same time, the total number of people that can be carried by the largest cruise ship of the Oasis class, Allure of the Seas, from Royal Caribbean International, is 6,780 people. Unlike the latter, however, the aircraft carrier was created for combat operations, not sunbathing in loungers on the upper deck. Therefore, it is much more thought out, even in the smallest aspects, from day-to-day -day activities such as eating to the launching of heavily armed fighters from deck via emails. The aircraft carrier's personnel are, roughly speaking, divided into two groups. About 3,000 people make up the ship's crew, and another 2,500 are part of the aircraft wing's crew. The standard air wing comprises of nine squadrons, each of which performs individual sessions, joining the carrier during its deployment. Oftentimes, after arriving on board an aircraft carrier, one is immediately assigned a living compartment, a room in which you will live with other crew members, a supervisor to whom one reports, and a workplace, which depends on your area of expertise. Since space for the crew is limited, the first thing one will learn to do when aboard an aircraft carrier is to lower your head regularly, if one is taller than 5 feet 10 inches. Otherwise, there's the risk of visiting the medical bay more than once. The narrow corridors of the ship and the rather steep stairs with almost vertical steps also force people to adapt to the peculiarities of movement there. Making climbing up and going down may seem akin to something of increased complexity, as if in a video game. In addition to the sleeping space, the crew member has a locker for clothes and other personal items. But the minimum space is hardly as daunting as the working conditions of engine room employees working with engines and boilers at temperatures reaching upwards of 140 degrees. Some even refer to this location as the carrier's inner circle of fire. Although on certain aircraft carrier models, even in the laundry room, the average temperature rarely drops below 120 degrees. At first, many newcomers find it difficult to remember even the path from their workspace and sleeping places to the dining room. But after a few months of adapting and exploring other nooks and crannies of the aircraft carrier, one will feel much more at ease, and the internal GPS will easily guide a person from one part of the giant ship to the other. Still, the dining room is not that hard to find, since one can just follow the pleasant aroma of the food that is prepared within these iron walls. After all, the portions are large and the meals are delicious. The US Navy has long understood one long-standing rule, a well-fed crew is a happy crew. Despite the reduction in the number of crews on the newest class of supercarriers, the ship is designed to provide the highest possible level of comfort for all people on board. At times, Gerald R. Ford boasts more automation when compared to its ancestor in the Nimitz class. First of all, how much less people huddle in the cabins than did in earlier models of aircraft carriers? There are separate racks for up to 60 people, 
and separate sitting areas that do not echo the operational sounds from the other ship's sections, thus providing sailors with sound sleep. Among the other things that ensure the comfort of staying in the cabins, one may note the energy-efficient lamps with soft light, USB hubs for charging portable gadgets, improved air conditioning, and much more space for the cultural and spiritual recreation of the staff. Such spaces include a gym with a boxing ring, a chapel, flat-screen TVs for watching movies, TV series, and TV shows. There are also game consoles, internet access, and even the ability to play basketball or baseball on one of the decks. Of course, the latter is not part of the sailor's daily schedule, but they, just like any of us, are supposed to have days of rest, too. If so desired, the crew can write letters to loved ones and send them off using a special air transport that delivers not only letters and parcels, but sometimes additional provisions. You can even get a package from Amazon here. However, most seafarers, for logical reasons, prefer to use email, as opposed to real mail. And even better are messenger apps. Besides, who would really refuse the opportunity to communicate with loved ones here and then, brightening up their tiresome seafaring routine just a bit? But there is one place on the aircraft carriers where learning is sure to occur, and it is none other than the takeoff deck. Razor sharp propellers, possible jet engine explosions, and helicopter propellers are just a few of the dangers that iron birds landing on an aircraft carrier are regularly exposed to. At peak times, the load of Gerald R. Ford can be up to 90 aircraft, which includes airplanes, helicopters, and UAVs, each of which needs not only constant maintenance, but also regular checks for the operability of all systems. The biggest challenge for an aircraft carrier's crew is, without a doubt, the long stay away from family and shore. On average, personnel spend anywhere from six to nine months on board the vessel. But, just like on land, people here strive to support each other and lighten the harsh 12 or more hour workdays by messing around, talking, sharing different life stories, and making lifelong friends. As you can see, life at sea is not exactly sunshine and rainbows, and some personnel may not even see the sun for weeks or months. But those who have been on board one of the Navy's aircraft carriers are unlikely to ever forget the feeling of excitement standing before the result of millions of hours spent building this majestic embodiment of an entire nation's power, roaming the vast oceans. And what about you? Have you ever been or even served on one of the U.S. Navy aircraft carriers? Share your experience with us in the comments below. And if you enjoyed today's video, feel free to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.